Hello everyone, I am back after a bit of a hiatus from the boat project. Um, yeah, work, man, it, it flared up and I have been swamped for the last couple of months. Uh, March 31st was my last video entry, um, which is also pretty much a day or so after I touched the boat the last time. Um, so jumping into this video, what I did is I have removed the transom and the stringers. So here's here's how I got started. Um, I had also commented on iBoats forums after my last video entry about the flotation boxes here on the sides of the transom. about to leave those or remove them. Um, I decided whenever trying to remove the transom first that they were going to be in my way. Um, and I, some people had suggested, you know, how to do a core sample to see if there was moisture in the flotation boxes and, you know, about keeping them. But that was going to be my plan. I was going to check all that, but it was just going to be cumbersome to get the transom out. And I got to looking at them and I thought, you know what, I don't mind to build some new flotation boxes, put them back in. I'm already going to tear this other stuff out. Why not do that? So I did. I just tore them out. And when I tore them out, I found some water pulled up in the corners of the bottoms of those boxes. So I'm glad I took them out. Um, jumping right back to the transom here, to the point. I went around the perimeter of it with my oscillating tool from Harbor Freight. And I forget at what point in doing this, the oscillating tool went out. Um, so anyway, I had to go replace that, finish the job. Um, then this is gonna look really terrible. Don't freak out. It looks like I'm prying on the hull of the boat between the transom and the, the shell. I'm not. Um, I was being really careful. I was just wedging ever so slightly and pushing on the transom, not pulling onto the hull. I was being really, really delicate. But it looks like I was being really rough. So to anybody out there thinking the otherwise, I'm not doing anything bad at all. And to prove my point, that I was being careful. The transom came out all in one piece. Um, I had heard stories, seen videos, pictures of people having to cut it up, remove it. I was able with some planning and, you know, just being really careful, able to get the transom out all in one go. Um, so it's out. It's, it's an inch and a half thick. Um, so I'll be sourcing some wood to build a new transom. That'll be another entry. So moving on to stringer removal. Um, started on the starboard side with the outer stringers. My plan here was going to be removing the outer four stringers. So you got one on starboard, one far left on port, one stair stepped in on starboard, one stair stepped in on port, and I was going to leave the center dagger. So that's the fifth stringer. So I removed the four stringers, working my way from starboard all the way to port. Coming out with starboard first, of course, this one came out pretty much no problem. Um, it did snap where they notched out for one of the bridges for the deck support, um, but got it on the ground and I was able to put it together so I have something nice to trace. Um, went on, stepped to the next one on starboard side, which is the bigger one out of the two. Um, was able to get it out uh, pretty much in one piece as well. It did. The wood was all rotted bad, and I found bore holes from termites. So, so glad I'm doing all this work because this boat, I don't, you know, I wouldn't trust it on the water. You know, if I would have just ignored everything and tried to put some patch of a deck in, uh, it's really good feeling now that I'm into, you know, tearing it out this far to see all the bad wood. It's really good um, that we're doing it. And uh, so, anyway. Got this stringer out, moving on over to the next one. This next stringer that I got out came out perfectly. 
um, got it on the ground all in one piece, I've got a perfect template to trace. The further port stringer, the outside one, not the case. It came out in pieces and it was really disintegrated. So, to recap here, port big stringer and the starboard further um, outlying smaller stringer. Those two stringers are going to be my templates for the new stringers. The other two stringers, um, the further port, I wouldn't be able to trace anything from it. The other one I could on starboard, the bigger of the two, but it's just, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use this other one on the port side because it's better. Starboard on that side and these two here are port uh, stringers. As it worked out, the far starboard um, stringer, the smallest one on the top there, um, that came out pretty much all in one piece. It did break right where they had it notched, but I can put it back together to get my outline no problem. And then next is the second starboard stringer. It's, it's theoretically in the shape, but if I take that last piece of fiberglass off of it, it's going to crumble the rest of the way, so I kind of just left it there in pieces. Um, and then thankfully, on port here, this stringer, which is the parallel one to the one we were just talking about, it actually came out in one piece. Um, so I've got something to trace there uh, once I find the, the lumber that I need. And then port, the last stringer I took out, the smallest one, as you can see, it's still got a lot of fiberglass around it because it was just disintegrating as I was taking it out. It broke in all different pieces. So, since I had the one up there to trace, you know, I'm, I'm not too upset about this one being broken up. And then again, I've got the transom out all in one piece too, so I have something to trace there as well. So, stringers, transom, removed. Um, now I'll, uh, I'll catch you back up on the rest of the project. I've also already bought some flap disc and I have bought a suit with a hood and as you saw in this video I was wearing my respirator. Um, so next foreshadowing with all those little inputs right there is removing the excess uh, fiberglass left over um, from where I cut loose the uh, stringers and stuff. I'm going to use flap disc to grind the hole so I can get it with fresh fiberglass being ever so careful so I don't grind through. I've been researching a lot because this is the task that I am really um, not excited about, <laughs> uh, to put it least. It was 90 degrees in this last part of this video today. It's Memorial Day weekend, 90 degrees. Uh, it's hot. So I know I need to get to the grinding soon um, or it's going to be worse weather-wise. But that's it. Um, Thank you guys for checking back and uh, watching this video. I know I took a little bit of a break. Um, back on track, it seems to be so far. The stringer transom removal, again, um, if I didn't say it, I did think it. Um, I was dreading this. Um, I don't know why. I can't explain why. Um, I guess just because I was so scared I wasn't going to get any templates to draw the stringers uh, to be replaced. Um, Maybe that was what it really was. That and the transom, I thought it was gonna everything was gonna come out in pieces, and I was just gonna, you know, have to take more time to figure out what to do moving forward. Luckily, that's not the case, and I can go straight on to grinding. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to um, trace the stringers um, that I took out uh, before grinding or not. That's just something I'm toying around with doing. I really want to kind of wait if I can until the grinding's done. That way I'm not um, kind of getting ahead of myself. Um, but anyway, I've got them kind of stored flat to where they're not bending or anything. And they're out of the way in the shop, so they should be fine. Um, but that's that. So uh, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Um, again, please consider subscribing. And uh, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.